Well, hi guys, Pastor Lynn Hansen here from North Park Church, Columbus and Fremont. Glad to be sharing with you in your life groups this week. I hope and pray that your life group is everything that it ought to be and that you are actively participating in it to make it everything that it ought to be. Well, I'm praying for you guys and praying for your life groups, praying that you guys will really uh, dig into God's Word and allow the Holy Spirit to uh, teach you how to listen to Him and how to uh, allow Him to work in your lives. Acts chapter 10, okay, we're going to look at uh, the first eight verses and then we're going to look at uh, verses 39 to 43 to kind of cap it off. And uh, then we'll come back to some verses that are in the middle of it uh, later on at, at a different teaching. But right now, we want to talk about something specific that's seen in this passage. And that is, what does it mean to be chosen by God? Uh, this is called the doctrine of election, the teaching that from the Bible that God chooses before the foundation of the world who will be rescued from sin and death through faith and therefore undeservingly be saved. Okay, so you see that kind of pictured here in Acts 10. And so we have an opportunity to, to really kind of see how that works out in a person's life. And, and so we want to pull that out of here and, and make sure that uh, we're talking about that and explaining it very well. So we did that last weekend and now in your life groups this week, um, you're going to have some, some kind of questions about how that works uh, in Acts 10 as well as in, in your life and we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. For now, we want to look at this passage. I'll, I'll tell you the story and uh, listen carefully because somebody in your group is going to step up and try to retell that story as best they can from memory. Everybody else add in what it is that they might have missed and uh, we just pray that this is a really good time for you. So listen to me carefully as I tell you the story. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms to, generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in to him and say, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? Lord there probably means sir. What is it, sir? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him, and having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Now again, skipping down to verse 39, so Peter opened his mouth and he said, so now he's at Cornelius' home, and we are witnesses. Here's what he's speaking to Cornelius and all of his family, all of his friends that Cornelius has gathered there. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. That's Jesus he's talking about. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to, judge, uh, to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, through the name of Jesus. So, there you go. Uh, somebody step up, try to retell that story as best you can from memory. Everybody else add in what it is that they may have missed. And let's get this story into our hearts. Go ahead and do that now, please. All right, well, next here, I hope you had a good time doing that, first of all, but then we have some discussion questions for you. I hope you'll have a really good time with these questions and be an active participant in what God wants to do in the lives of the people in your group as well as your own life. So question number one, have you ever been chosen for something special? So you, you think back, hopefully not too far, and, and, and you know, you were really chosen for something uh, kind of special. And, and what was it? And how did that make you feel? Okay, 
talk about that for a few moments. Uh, take a few minutes to think about it if you like and share with your group. All right, thinking about question number two, here's what we need you to do. Somebody grab your Bible and open to Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30. Romans 8, 28 to 30. Have somebody in your group, choose somebody in your group. Uh, since we're talking about being chosen by God, choose somebody in your group, elect them uh, to read slowly aloud Romans 8, verses 28 to 30. Okay, and after they have read that, discuss as a group how you see this these verses Romans 8 28 to 30 illustrated in our story at Acts chapter 10 okay so how do you see Acts 8 28 or excuse me how do you see Romans let me mess you up a little bit how do you see Romans 8 28 to 30 uh, played out lived out worked out uh, illustrated in our story at Acts chapter 10 Okay, it's a tough question. Pray about it a minute, and uh, and and let's see what it is that uh, you can you can pull out of there. There's the principles at Acts uh, eight, excuse me, Romans eight, twenty eight to thirty. The principles are there, and then the story is in Acts chapter ten. So uh, talk about that. Now here's the thing: we don't need anybody to try to teach the rest of the group. Anything from Romans 8, 28 to 30, and, and, and to start to theorize a bunch of stuff. But how do you see it lived out at Acts 10? All right? Go ahead and, and pray for a little bit and, uh, and see what you can find out there. Don't, don't worry about it too much. Just see what you can pull out of there. All right, question number three, what uh, evidence do you see that Cornelius was chosen by God? What, what evidences do you see that Cornelius was a person who had, had obviously been chosen by God uh, for salvation? Okay, um, talk about that a little bit in your group and see what you can come up with. Evidence from the story. All right, question number four then, um, what, what evidence do you see in your life that you are chosen by God? Uh, what kinds of things are, are showing up that show you, um, that indicate from what you see biblically that you are chosen by God, that you're chosen for salvation? Go ahead and talk that over, please. All right, and finally, our takeaway question, question number five, which we end with this a lot of times, but uh, it's, a, it's a great question, an important question. What is it that God wants you to take away from your life group this week? What's the big thing that God wants you to get and, uh, and, and take with you so you can wrestle it out, pray about it, and really get it into your heart and your mind? Uh, as you walk away from your life group, here's what I'm talking about. As you walk away from your life group, as, as you're, you're, you're mulling it around later tonight or tomorrow, uh, do you just entirely forget what it is that's been talked about, or is there one big thing? See, that's what this is all about. You can grab one big thing, and you can make sure that you're really learning this, really getting this into your heart and mind uh, for the sake of Christ, for growth in His likeness. All right, so what is that thing? Talk about that with your group. I want you to notice that I've put some further study notes on there. Uh, this is not something that you necessarily need to do together, but... Uh, uh, they're just some notes that uh, I've gathered as, as we've studied this subject, and so it'd be a great thing for you later on to take your Bible and sit down and, and just look at this, these further study notes and learn a little bit more about what it means to be chosen by God. What does it mean to be elected to salvation? All right, well, God bless you guys. Have the rest of a great life group, a great week, and I'll see you soon.